I am so sick of people recommending GPUs at certain price points and reviewing them and talking about which one's better when they clearly have not actually looked at what these GPUs actually cost to a normal person who is just like, I'm on the internet right now and I want to buy a GPU when I'm when that's convenient and I don't have time to spend months of my life searching for deals, getting on waiting lists and like trying to, you know, maybe I need to get a bot program to buy one for me or wait hours at a, at a store, which isn't even really much of an option these days. So like, okay. I've pulled up three lists and I'll, I'll click refresh on these right now. This is not, I don't even actually know what the prices are gonna be, okay? So this first list, and I just clicked refresh on it, right? I'm clicking refresh. This is just right now when I happen to film the video. All I've selected here is Radeon GPUs on PC Part Picker. So I'm trying to simulate, not, not I'm not trying to show like if I spent months looking for the best possible deal. I'm trying to show what is the actual normal person experience if you're just shopping for a GPU, right? So you pull up the list of GPUs. PC Part Picker doesn't find everything that's available on the internet, but it searches a lot of major retailers and shows you what's actually in stock right now. Okay, my other list, and I'm clicking refresh on it. So we clicked it twice, right? So this is not, I didn't wait for the right time to make this video to make AMD or Nvidia look better, you know, one than the other or anything like that. Now, what have I selected? I have selected the 30 series GPUs from Nvidia. So we're comparing the latest generation. These have been out, you know, launched over a year ago now at this point. And then I have a third list that I'll refresh. And this is just all GPUs, okay? Just all GPUs, and I've sorted all of these lists by a low to high pricing filter, okay? <laughs> That's what we've done. Now, what I want you guys to understand then is you're buying a certain performance, right? There's also features, there's ray tracing versus rasterized performance and driver issues, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But what I wanna show you guys is that the GPUs that people actually think are competing against each other aren't the ones that are actually competing against each other. Let me make myself a little bit smaller and out of the way. Ah, I'm melting, okay. Okay, I'm out of the way here so we can just look at some prices together for a second. Like I said, I don't actually know what these prices are gonna be. Um, okay, looks like the prices are a bit worse than they typically are, but this is not, um, <laughs> not that bad. I mean, well, not that bad in this market. In other words, um, I, okay, like an RX 6600, I literally posted a deal for this that stayed in stock for hours on my uh, on my YouTube channel community page for $100 less than this recently. So to be clear, I am not shopping for a moment when there's a best deal to compete against each other, right? So the cheapest AMD 6000 series card available on PC Part Picker's list right now is about $560, okay? So let's jump up to uh, the Nvidia list, okay? So again, we've got the Nvidia list also sorted by price low to high, and the cheapest 3000 series NVIDIA GPU available right now is almost $800. So when people compare the 3060 and say that it's better than the 6600, so you'd be stupid to buy the 6600 because they have the same $329 MSRP, those people have absolutely no idea what the actual GPU market looks like. Either that, or they are intentionally being dishonest. They're either ignorant or being dishonest. That's all there is to it. So I'm not going to tell you that an RX 6600 is better than an RTX 3060, but whether or not you feel like having a little bit more VRAM, having DLSS and better ray tracing performance is worth paying $800 instead of, well, okay, $790 instead of $560, well, that's up to you. Now, how do you tell how, how performant cars are? Well, you should look up reviews of those cards, but I would also recommend this website, Tech Power Up, where we see um, you can, they have a good GPU database where all of their reviews 
then get put up against each other in a relative performance chart. Now, to be clear, this isn't perfect. Um, no chart like this can be, because the exact game that you're playing might require a different amount of VRAM, fa favor one particular architecture over the other. But So these are just based on very large averages of review scores. But in general, in RX 6600, if we're just talking rasterized gaming performance, is extremely close to a 2060 Super or an RTX 2070, and only slightly behind an RTX 3060. And that's for 1080p data. It does fall a little bit further behind at 1440p, and that's where you need to get into more specific reviews, look up gameplay benchmarks of the particular card that you're looking at, right? But this is how you can get a rough idea of how cards perform against each other versus how much they cost compared to each other. And those two things are usually very, very different. So let's start scrolling through and, and noticing, okay, when we step up to the next GPU, we've got an RX 60, uh, 6600 XT, which currently only costs $10 more than the 6600. So if you were buying a GPU today, you'd be insane to buy the 6600 because the 6600 XT for only $10 more is going to, um, let's, let's pull up our, our tech power up chart. The 6600 XT gets you about 20%, well, 19% more performance. It's also gonna be slightly better at things like ray tracing and, and that um, because it does have more RT cores if that's something you care about. The point is, also notice that the 6600 XT is now better than the RTX 3060. Okay, so we can get a, a 6600 XT for $570, and I'll be the first to admit that price sucks. But if you have to buy a GPU right now and you're not just hunting for deals, Notice that we can't get a 3060 Ti, which would be the better competitor against this, for anything like this price. They don't even barely even exist. NVIDIA hardly manufactures 3060 Ti's because they'd rather put that, that GPU towards something that makes them more money, I think. I don't know exactly, but the point is $790. Now, sure, I can find 3060s cheaper than that sometimes. Sometimes I can find them as low as like $600, $650. But that's having to hunt for a deal and I can find a 6600 XT for $500 uh, or less uh, sometimes if I'm hunting for deals, okay? Right, you see what I'm saying? Let's scroll up the list and see again. Um, well, actually before we scroll up, so what if you wanted to actually buy something in this price bracket, but you wanted to buy it from Nvidia? Let's pull up our full GPU comparison list, okay? So if we're in the $500 range, let's start to see what sorts of GPUs are available in this, in, in this price bracket. Well, we're seeing some 1650s. So you could get a 1650, a 1660, uh, 1650, 1650. It, it looks to me like the best NVIDIA GPU you can get in this price bracket is a GTX 1660. And by the way, that's not going to have your DLSS and ray tracing performance um, advantage the way the 30 series GPUs will versus your AMD competitor. So can we scroll up just a bit to get an NVIDIA competitor? Honestly, we're still seeing 1660s up here in the $600 price range, 1660s, 1650s, 1050 Ti's. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go a long way bef before we find any, okay, an RTX 2060 for almost $700. So if you want to spend a hundred and what is that? $125 more to get an NVIDIA card. You could get an RTX 2060 uh, instead of the RX uh, 6600 XT that we can get for $570. So that'd be about $115 difference. Okay, so you'll pay more to get an RTX 2060. Now you're going to have DLSS. Um, but again, the actual just rasterized gaming performance there from the 6600 XT versus the 2060, if I set the, uh, well, let's set the 2060 as our baseline. So if the 2060 is our baseline, and then we sc uh, scroll up here, the 6600 XT is 33% faster for $115 less. So you would need DLSS just to get you back to even performance, not to give you a performance advantage. This is what the real GPU market looks like. All right, let's scroll up to higher pricing tiers. So we're still looking at 6600 XTs. Six, okay, so finally we jump into a 6700 XT. So the 6700 XT first enters our chart at about $900. So we're seeing at about $910 right now. 
let's see what kinds of uh, GPUs are available from NVIDIA. Well, notice the 3060 Ti doesn't even pop up because they barely manufacture those. And the 3070 also doesn't pop up next because they barely manufacture those. NVIDIA created the 3070 Ti in order to basically stop producing 3070s and sell a higher profit margin card. I'm not saying they don't produce them at all, but they barely produce them. And what does a 3070 Ti cost you? It's going to cost you $1,279. Okay, $1,279. Now, again, the uh, 3060s, you could just buy a more expensive 3060. So really, NVIDIA's 3060 is not just even competing against a 6600 or a 6600 XT. On the actual market, it's competing more with the 6700 XT, which is going to absolutely crush it <laughs> in performance. Okay, now... Let's keep scrolling up. Once we go past the 6700 XT, um, the now I'll say, speaking of GPU models that barely exist, the RX 6800 barely exists. <laughs> I feel like um, almost all of those GPUs are really 6800 XTs. It's, it's really hard to find these things. So this is coming in, by the way, the 6800 is coming in cheaper than our 3070 Ti, although I do think the 3070 Ti might uh, might performance-wise be a pretty good match there. But again, you're still paying more for that 3070 Ti. And then now let's keep scrolling down. The 6800 XT enters the picture here at $1,330, which, okay, compared to 1279. So 1280 versus 1330, we're paying $50 more to get a 6800 XT. Now, what's that gonna buy you? It's gonna get you double the VRAM capacity for one thing, which if you're running at high resolutions and high settings might matter to you. Let's assume that we're talking in the 1440p bracket. So these GPUs are, in other words, like guys, when people compare the 6800 XT up to against the 3080, that's not the card you should be comparing it with. You should be comparing the 6800 XT with the card that actually costs the most similar to it in the actual market, which is the 30 3070 Ti. The 3070 Ti versus the, uh, <laughs> okay, the 3070 Ti. Let's set that as our baseline, okay? So for an extra $50, you could buy a 6800 XT, which is going to get you 18% better performance at 4K, which is interesting because that's what this chart does uh, at GPUs stronger than a 2080 Ti. The um, 6800 XT at 1440p will actually have an even further performance, uh, performance advantage versus the 3070 Ti. Let's pull up some actual more detailed reviews here because this is one of the things that inspired me to make this video because um, people argue about the 3080 against the 6800 XT and like, those aren't in the same price bracket on the actual market. So let's pull up something here like Hardware Unboxed. The 3070 Ti review placed it at 1440p uh, in their 12 game average here, averaging 120 frames per second, 128 frames per second, um, whereas the 6800 XT was averaging 157 frames per second. Okay, that is quite a significant jump in performance for that 6800 XT. Now you might bring up, but what about the ray tracing performance? So it was hard for me to find reviews that pulled these up directly compared in ray tracing performance. But I did find a small YouTube channel here, and I'll, I'll link it in my description, where um, they did a review comparing these graphics cards, and some of it did include ray tracing. So I don't know this particular source very well. I'm, I'm not going to cover it up. This is Crazy Tech Lab. Um, and they've got the uh, so Watchdogs Legion heavily favors Nvidia in ray tracing performance. There's other games that um, are more even or even have a bit of a uh, you know Far Cry 6 for example. The ray tracing is is really geared towards AMD. But here we see the 6800 XT and the 3070 Ti almost even in ray tracing performance. Sure, the 3080 completely outclasses the 6800 XT in terms of ray tracing performance, but they don't cost the same, right? These are actually pretty even in a heavily NVIDIA favored ray tracing title at ultra ray tracing settings. And then um, if we pull up, he also did Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. And this one um, also has actually has the 6800 XT a bit ahead of the 3070 Ti. And, um, and this is with the ray tracing set all the way up to ultra. So... <laughs> 
the really only ma major difference here you have is DLSS. So if you think DLSS is worth it to you, and it might be, then consider going the NVIDIA route. Also, if you do productivity, um, the NVIDIA cards can be worth a lot more for productivity. A lot of apps um, heavily favor or only support the NVIDIA architecture on that. But if we're talking straight up gaming performance, it's really only DLSS where you might have that advantage. And that's, that's to gain pull ahead in ray tracing performance. You'll need DLSS to do that. And FSR at high resolutions is okay. It's not as good as DLSS, but it is okay. It can also help you get some of that performance back. Now, if we continue down, down the chart here, um, let's see what le that like the 3080 doesn't even, here's our first 3070, by the way, it's, it's $1,700, okay? <laughs> um, and then, oh, here's our first 3060 Ti also for $1,700. And then we got some more 3070s. Notice there's no 3080s at all. The 3080s aren't even available on PC Part Picker right now because, like I said, they don't make those. When I mean, okay, they make a few every now and then, but what they really manufacture are 3080 Ti's. And while that has a $1,200 MSRP, its actual cost is usually at least $2,000 and often more. Here we're seeing it first show up at almost $2,200 for a 3080 Ti. Now, what do we get from the AMD side of the thing? So if we scroll down from, from AMD, when do we next see uh, a better GPU? Where are we gonna get a, okay, 6900 XT. And, oh wait, we've got one here. Um, oh wait, we actually got a 6900 XT even further down the list, I missed that at first. Okay, so this is what, $400 less? So for $400 less almost, 300 and something dollars less, you can get a 6900 XT to compete with the 3080 Ti. Now, if you're talking 4K gaming, I really do think the 3080 Ti might be the better card there, but still, you're spending hundreds of dollars more to get it. And by the way, I see uh, 6900 XTs, if we talk hunting deals, you can actually get them for about 1500 bucks pretty regularly, pretty easily. Whereas 3080 Ti's are very hard to find for less than $2,000. Now, NVIDIA offers an even higher uh, higher premium card, which is the 3090, but those really are almost never available for less than $3,000. So um, at that point, <laughs> if you really wanna just buy that, fine. Okay, whatever. All right, this video is getting really long, but I, I really just wanted to dispel the myth that, uh, you know, like a 6800 XT is competing with a 3080 on the actual market. It isn't. It's competing with the 3070 Ti. A 6600 is competing up against a 1660, not a 3060. 3060 <laughs> is actually priced uh, kind of in between a 6600 XT and a, um, what was it, a, a 6700 XT. The prices are out of this world. So, Yes, you might still want an NVIDIA card. I'm not saying you'd be stupid to buy one, but you have to think about how much is that little bit of extra software support, things like that, DLSS. Uh, I guess they have more stable drivers. I have a 6800 XT and I don't have a lot of drivers issues with it, but let's just say that's a real thing. Productivity apps, it might still make sense. Um, again, depending on the ones that you're locked into, sometimes NVIDIA is the only way to go. But then again, you might be doing Linux stuff or Mac stuff where AMD is the only way to go. So. Anyway, I better shut up. What do you guys think? Let me know. <laughs> Have an excellent day.